Hi, it's Jeff here from discoverdoublebass.com. That's the home of online double bass lessons. If you want more videos about the double bass, you want to learn more about the instrument, please go and check out that website uh, after this lesson. Now today I'm carrying on with my series of real world gigging tips for double bass players. Um, I'm giving you some real, real practical solutions here today on how you can beat feedback. We all know that awful feeling. When that happens on stage, it's never a good thing. So I'm gonna show you how you can stop it and get the best sound from your double bass. Well, my first tip is that you use an amplifier or a preamp that has a high impedance of either one mega ohm or maybe as much as 10 mega ohms. Now, I'm really not uh, an expert at this side of bass playing in terms of describing exactly what's happening. But what I do know is that bass guitar amps that are designed for magnetic pickups have a lower impedance. And if you're having a piezo pickup, like we'll be using on the double bass for the majority of the time, you're going to want an input that has a higher impedance, impedance. And for some reason, it sounds better. Now this uh, acoustic image amplifier gives you two options, one mega ohm and 10 mega ohms, I think, both of which are great for double bass. Um, and it's just a really good feature to have, but it's also present if you don't have a, an expensive separate double bass amplifier. You can get a preamp like the Fishman Platinum Pro or this one, which is a HFP preamp, uh, an older version I've got here. I think the new one's a bit, a bit fancier, but essentially it has the right input impedance for the double bass. And that is, it's just been a huge thing for me. When I discovered this, it really made a difference to my uh, sound and my ability to get more volume before feedback. So setting, uh, using the right input impedance will help you. And the other feature on your amplifier is the low, uh, the high pass filter or the low cut filter. And this is uh, also present in this little uh, preamp as well. So you've got the right input impedance and you can also adjust the um, low cut filter, the high pass filter. And what that does is it, cuts the extreme low end of your double bass, the frequencies below the notes that you're actually playing. And those are the frequencies that tend to feed back. Now, if you just turn the bass down on your double bass, oh, sorry, on, on, um, on your EQ, it will cut that specific notch. So if you think about like the, uh, a line with all your EQ points, it'll just drag one of them down. But what about the ones that are even lower than, uh, than the bass setting on here? Well, that's where the high pass or the low cut filter comes in because it cuts everything like that and then carries on. So it's a really useful bit of gear. Essentially, it will stop your amp feeding back. So let me just give you a little demonstration about how this works. If I turn the amp on, it's set so high that it'll feed back. And if I have, I'm just gonna try and stop it now. If I have the low cut filter high pass filter just completely off it's going to feed back really easily it really wants to feed back i can't take my hands off it without that happening but if i just engage the this filter this is effectively cutting the extreme low end to the point now where i, I could actually play something now it's so loud the sound will be terrible but if i have this all the way off it's a lot more feedback prone so it's really hard to demonstrate feedback in a video, but believe me that when you're on a gig, this will really help. And it just cuts the low end rumble and gives more focus to your tone. Now, my next tip is how you use the amp as well in terms of the positioning. Bring it off the floor. My Euphonic Audio amp has a little handle on the bottom that I can pull out and it just lifts, tilts the amp back. That's often enough to kind of focus the sound a bit more and stop it coupling with the floor especially if you're on a boomy stage, but also if you're playing in a corner under a low ceiling or really close to a wall, you'll find that it's more, your amplifier is more feedback prone uh, than if it's raised up on a beer crate or whatever, you know, chair, whatever you can get hold of at the gig. Um, it'll kind of isolate it and stop it coupling with the floor and becoming, yeah, too boomy. Now, let me see what else I've got. Um, yeah, the other thing that I've said here is that if you're playing in a loud band, perhaps you're playing in a big band and you're having feedback problems, you might find that they've set the bass level too high in the monitor mix. So if you're using a sound engineer and they 
often don't know how to really get the best out of a double bass. They're used to dealing with bass guitar that's a lot louder, uh, generally, you know. And if they have the monitor mix set too loud, sometimes that can be a real issue. And I found that cutting it out of your monitor, because you can already hear it from the amplifier, or maybe um, some of the other band members' monitors, or just reducing that level will really help uh, cut down the feedback that you're hearing on stage. Okay, now I've got to the bass. What can we do to adjust the instrument itself to help you? And then I've got some really extreme options that I'll come to at the end. Now the first one is that I carry a hand towel that I use to clean rosin from the strings. And I've actually found that folding this up quite tightly and jamming it behind the tailpiece of the double bass um, eliminates feedback. So if I just put that down there. Um, so that will, if you look at the tailpiece there, you'll see that the, I mean, actually I've got a, a bone quiv on the tailpiece as well, but the, the cloth behind the tailpiece just jammed in will really help you to um, kind of stop the tailpiece vibrating with the feedback. I'm not quite sure what happens, uh, but I've seen people put cloths down there, really thick um, things like uh, tennis balls even, or sponge balls between the tailpiece and the body. And I think it basically cuts down the resonance of the instrument. That's essentially what you're doing. So that's one option. I've also seen people use mutes on the double bass. And this is actually, I was gonna leave this for later, this is pretty a uh, pretty extreme option. An orchestral mute perhaps, I don't have one on the instrument, or maybe even something as crazy as a practice mute will cut down the acoustic resonance of the bass. It's not something I'd recommend you try in the first instance there. Now, the other thing that has an impact is the strings. If you're using a dark, maybe an orchestral string, a dark sounding orchestral string that's very thuddy, that doesn't have much definition, you're more likely to get feedback, in my experience, than if you're using a more focused string. So I find that like, um, sometimes lighter gauge strings, feedback less. My example would be that the Eva Parazzi Vike strings that I use, feedback less and are more articulate than um, the orchestral gauge. And I think actually that's the key thing here is that it allows you to hear them clearer without increasing the volume. That's probably why I've got more experience with feedback and with those kind of strings. But you might want to consider trying a more defined string, a spiral core, as opposed to, you know, an orchestral string like um, the Bel Canto set. You know, spiral core are a lot brighter and will probably cut through the mix a bit more. I really love this, you know, the Piastro Eva Parazzi Vike. They work great for me. Another thing with the bass that you could try is lowering the string height a touch. I found, and I would only recommend this really if you have an adjustable bridge, because it's, it, we're experimenting here. But I found that if you have the, um, the strings higher, the bass is more resonant, you're getting more acoustic volume than a lower string height. And I've just personally found taking it down a bit does actually also help reduce the feedback. And I think that's because the acoustic qualities of the bass aren't as high as they are if you raise the strings up a bit. Okay, extreme options now. I've heard about people pressing the back of the double bass with their knee to try and stop it resonating. Um, I would say that you need to be very careful about letting go of the bass. You notice when I was demonstrating the feedback earlier, I was holding on to the strings to stop it feeding back. Stopping the strings resonating will stop the feedback, or certainly cut it right down. Um, so try not to sort of never walk away from your instrument and leave it plugged in. Um, and keep hold of the strings if you can feel it feeding back. Just try and keep in contact with them at all, at all points. Um, as I say, I have heard about people pressing on the back of the bass. I've even heard about people adding an extra sound post. Now, that's never something that I've felt the need to do. But I suspect part of that is the type of gigs that I play aren't really loud double bass gigs. They're more like shows, jazz, big band, that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, sure, you're gonna get a lot of volume, but it's not like I'm playing a really huge rockabilly band in a stadium or something. Um, so I think if you were in that kind of situation, then you maybe would need to think about more extreme options. And my last one for you is that you could plug the F holes. Now, my view is, again, it probably won't have a, huge beneficial impact putting foam in here 
but you could try it if you're really stuck and you're finding that the feedback is getting in the way of your playing then by all means give that a try so finally these are the last two really extreme options try a different pickup because I use a Fishman Full Circle, which is a fantastic pickup. Um, I've used it for at least 10 years, um, and I absolutely love it. It's, it's really feedback resistant. It's not perfect, like any um, you know, pickup will be, but it's in my experience, it's amongst the best in terms of feedback resistance. So you might want to try a different pickup. Perhaps you're using a cheaper, a cheaper one that you have tried and it's just not working. I think the next stage, after you've considered these options we've discussed, is to try a new pickup. After that, think about the instrument that you're playing. If you have a really boomy, big uh, double bass, maybe a big orchestral instrument, you're going to have more feedback than you would do on a smaller um, plywood instrument that is less resonant. Usually we want that big resonant sound for acoustic playing, but that can you know, create challenges with feedback when you're playing live. Now, if you can add your suggestions, I would love to hear them because I don't play really, really loud gigs like some of you out there will be doing, especially if you're playing rockabilly. I'd love to hear how you're dealing with those really loud uh, situations and controlling the feedback and cutting through the mix. It's such an interesting topic. Um, so please jump in the comments below this video to share that. Keep practicing hard. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.